welcome to the second muggy method. Today I'll be making one of my scarf pins in the flow design. I start by measuring and cutting my steel. For this project I use two different stocks. Once the steel is cut, I use a file to take off what's called a burr. This is a sharp edge that's left after you've cut the steel. The first stock that you saw is for the scarf pin itself, whereas this stock is for the actual pin. It's the same process, cutting with the grinder and then filing off the burrs. For the first heat, which is 1300 degrees Celsius, give or take, and this is roughly yellow colour. We start the process with a bull nose, which is taking off the corners, and then we do a ribbon taper, which is flattening on one dimension. I take the taper over the edge of the anvil and make an open scroll using just the hammer. Next I use scrolling pliers. I use pliers over tongs just because it's slightly easier to manipulate. I have fairly small hands. And we're making a small shepherd's crook shape. We do the exact same process from bull nose to taper to scroll and on the other end and you can see the scale is flaking off with the temperature change. Following the crooks, we now perform an S bend, uh, which is basically folding into thirds, and you can see the S shape. For a fourth heat and performing the S bend on the other shepherd's crook or the other side to create this flow shape. The final major step on the design part of the scarf pin is to put a flat in it. I do this to add a little bit of detail, it also catches the light slightly differently. I mark out this particular part of my anvil because it's the bluntest edge so it doesn't leave any gores or marks on the other side of the steel. I get an overall heat on the whole piece and then use scroll tongs this time to just pinch together those S bends to correct any warping that happened during the flattening process. soaking heat just to get it nice and even. This hide mallet is a three pounder which is far too big for the actual technique that I need but it's a wider spread across the piece that I'll be bending so it just makes it better. 
using a hard mallet and a bit I put a curve into the scarf bin. This just makes more room for the material of the scarf. We start work on the pin and we do a round taper on one end. Then flipping it over and doing a ribbon taper like on the larger stock on the pin. Switching back to the scroll pliers, I do a very open scroll on the ribbon end and this will be for the clasp onto the pin design. Switching to my one pound hide mallet back on the bit, I'm bending the pin to get a curve and then a little flick on the other end, this just makes it sit better against the design and the fabric. to the clasp end, I hook it onto the designed scarf pin and squeeze with normal flat pliers. I squeeze from two sides rather than just one, it makes the scroll circular rather than oval, it means that it spins much more freely on the pin. brush with my block brush to clean off any stubborn scale that I've got on there. And the block brush doesn't fit onto the inside of the curve so we switch to a smaller brush later. given it a good brush and got it nice and clean you drop it onto the top of the fire very quickly for a heat and then we wax it using renaissance wax Here's the finished scarf pin. I recommend using this in chunky knit fabrics, scarves or cardigans. Thanks for watching and for joining us for the second Moggy Method. If you like these, they are available on my Etsy shop or you can follow my social media and find out what new products are available there.